Week 18. Wow. Well, week 17. We did two uh, two episodes in our first week. We did? Yeah. I think we might have done them back-to-back days. Huh. Yeah, we were, we were pretty gung-ho back then. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Welcome to the new year. Yeah, welcome. 2021. So- Remember when we said, don't get your hopes up? <laughs> <laughs> it feels... <laughs> A little bit like 2020. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. yeah. Give it some time. Give it a little time. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice how it's getting brighter earlier each day? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Nice. I mean, if you live in a cold climate like we do in the wintertime, it it makes a difference. Yeah. It does. It has been pretty cold. I mean, not... It does get very cold in New Jersey. Like we do get down to like five degrees sometimes, right, very right. rarely, but it's felt cold. Yeah. It's been in like the thirties or, you know, twenties at night. Teens and twenties are more normal for us in the wintertime. So I yeah. guess, you know, we're not Buffalo. We're not no. you know, upstate New York no. and uh, upper Michigan and those places. But to us, it feels cold. Yeah. Yeah. A little thin-skinned at this point. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I went to Arizona State for two years. and Oh, yeah, it's hot. So it's 115, 118. And everybody who comes from, like, there's a lot of kids from Chicago area when I went there and all the kids from the Northeast. We went through the first year without coats, you know, through the Mm wintertime because it would be in 50s, 60s. It felt warm to us. (laughs) <laughs> By the second year, we're wearing down coats, yeah. you know, it's 50 degrees. Where's my down jacket? It doesn't jacket? take long for the body to uh, <laughs> throw everything it had. <laughs> oh, that was 100 years ago. Mm. <laughs> it's probably even hotter there now. Well, yeah, thanks to uh, you know who. <laughs> yeah, everybody. <laughs> Well, I'm thirsty. What do we got this year? Oh it's, yeah, uh, this yeah. Week for First beer of the beer. week. This is this is the beer of the week, but it's it's the beer of the new year. Crack two off. Cans. Yeah, this is a departure for me having the cans. And look what we got. Slide one under there. Ah, I almost bought uh, a beer from them last week. Yeah. This is the Ross. You know, I went in there. We go to this uh, this little local. Um, they they have like a little bar in the back, but it's a packaged goods place called yeah. Harvest Portside. Portside. Yeah, Portside. And they have a great selection of uh, small brewers in there. Yeah. yeah, they have. It's so unassuming because it's in like a strip mall. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Chinese restaurant. Like the whole typical yeah, next setup. to a barber shop. And <laughs> you walk in and I mean, they have a great selection of beer. Yeah, it's amazing. So Ross is actually over in Red Bank, which is uh, about, well, I guess it's the next town over. One of it the is, next yeah. towns over. This is the Passaic Porter, honey porter with vanilla and cacao. Yeah, I thought that sounded most interesting. I mean, they had another yeah. one that had fruit in it, but we've done that in the last couple of weeks. Oh, check this out. Uh, our honey porter is inspired by the Passaic River, a hardworking beer for a hardworking river. Brewed, in Monmouth Ca- brewed with Monmouth County, that's where we live, Monmouth County, grown wildflower honey. Yeah. And fermented with Madagascar bourbon, vanilla beans, and Peruvian cacao nibs. This is a dark, rich, creamy, flavorful treat. We wish we could drink it all the time. Yeah. It it really sounded great. I thought you'd be interested in it. You know, it had the vanilla and the cacao in yeah. there. And um, they all their beers had local names, you know. Yeah, they have the Shrewsbury Lager. Right, and, and yeah. the Manasquan. I they saw. must all be rivers, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We were just up by the Passaic, weren't we? That's we were right. To we were saying, is that the Passaic? I was like, that's got to be the Passaic River. Cool. I'm excited to try yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think we uh, we wanted to go to Ross last year when we went out for our Festivus uh, yeah. little bar crawl, but uh, they weren't, I don't think they were open. No. Because we, we did it on like a Monday. Yes, yes. That's right. I remember that. So, cheers. 2021. That's right. Here we come.
That's good. I like porters a lot. I like porters more than stouts. I don't know what the main difference is. Um, That's different. Yeah. Independent craft. Yeah, this these guys are all right. And a, a mild 6.1 alcohol. Yeah, I got to keep an eye on those. <laughs> <I know. laughs> just, just so you know, we don't go back to work after no, this. Uh, no, I went home. I was wiped out last week. It's just, it's. See, these are 16 ounce cans, so that's really like a beer and a third. And then you compound that with a beer that's eight percent and change alcohol. Well. You really had two and two-third beers. Yeah, we don't eat big lunches here. No. So. Um, and we're lightweights. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, yeah. that's the real reason. I go home, I get the podcast <laughs> uploaded, and then I'm spent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so up next, we got the tool of the week. It yeah. is me this week. I had a hard time picking something, but I think I found a little gem here that may be yeah. a... People don't necessarily know about, but never thought to try. Uh, so I like to use these Starrett Exact tape measures. This is a 16 footer. That's what I prefer. I have a 12 footer as well, but it has a very narrow blade. Yeah, I like this three quarter inch uh, for shop work. I like a little something bigger for for yeah. on site, um, just because you need stand out a lot of times on site. Whereas here, even if you're measuring something long, it's laying on the work. Um, so it's not a problem. So these are not made like where the stair squares and stuff are made. Yeah. These are made in China. Um, but I always, when I buy one new, by the way, these are super cheap. <laughs> yeah. These are like $5. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they yeah. fluctuate. I buy them on Amazon. They fluctuate in price from like $4 and change to like seven or $8 and change, depending on when you go to buy it. Um, I actually have a, one of those subscriptions where every three yeah. months they just send me one because, you know, they, they go bad. They don't go bad that fast, but I, I'll just swap it out for five bucks. Um, just give me a new tape. Um, but what I do when I get it is I take the 18-inch stare at combo square and I'll make sure that, you know, the first 18 inches of this is, is dead on. And I haven't even had to adjust any of them. They've no. all been dead on. So. Yeah, pretty much if... If the first foot is is right. Yeah, I mean, you know, these have to be right. laid out on some sort of consistent. Right. Because it's the little tab on the end that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do you in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and right at 12 inches where you transfer from from uh, 30 seconds to 16. Yeah. I feel like that's where you could get some discrepancy. So right. going a full six inches past that. Um I think it's good. I mean, I would try one of these out. The we've had we got a couple thirty footers from the guys at Stare, <laughs> yeah. and they they're, they're huge. Yeah, first off, it's like a softball, <laughs> like literally the size of a softball. Um, these are nice too because they're they're pretty compact this yeah. way. They're yeah. only about I don't know what you said. It's so about an inch, yeah. inch and a quarter. Yeah, a little bigger than an inch. I used to use that exact tape as well. Yeah, I went to the Tajima. I like those. Yeah. And uh, I tell you, I like that tape. And the one thing about it, when you're working with several people in the shop, you got to make sure your tapes match. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we worked together with somebody who had an old tape that was near and dear to him. And it was a 16th off. Yeah. And you, you would and everybody be else's tape. Yeah. <laughs> everybody else's tape matched except his. And so I'd be measuring. I'm like, this is only 23 and yeah. 11 sixteenths. Yeah. It's like, well, I got 23 and three quarter. Well, yeah, you do, but nobody <laughs> else does. Yeah. Ran in, we ran into some problems with that. Even when we made him aware of it, he was just like tough. Yeah. Another thing I like about this is the lock button. Yeah. It's, you don't even have to really engage it all the way, yeah. but it, it's very easy to push. It's got a big, um, ramp i guess you would call it right here to get your thumb on some of those tapes like the stanley power lock with the little yellow one yeah, yeah. it's really hard to push and it doesn't your finger yeah. wants to slip off it it's um, got a good shape i mean i like that tape as well yeah um i'd probably still be using it if um it, it wasn't, wasn't made in china if it wasn't made in china and also you know tapes are just one of those fetish items you know yeah. like oh in fact i don't think there's a tape made 
that I really think is perfect. I would love like a 12 for the shop. I'd love a 12 foot tape, but with the, the heft of like a typical 16. Yeah. Part. Yeah. Like if they made this in 12, but just right without making the, t- the tape. And you smaller. know, the thing about this, let me see this one. This is actually longer than 16 feet. Yeah. Yeah. They, that's the thing about those star tapes. You know, most of the time you get a 16 foot tape and it's like 14 and a half feet. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so this one actually goes to 16. Really? I've had one that went all the way to 20 feet, though. Really? A six, then it was labeled 16 I feet. I think I remember we had a couple that um, would go out well beyond the 16-foot mark. I mean, because we have so many of that particular model of tape around here. Yeah, so these go in a cycle from, like, the apron... There's one, like, I'll keep one in the drawer that's new. Then I have one in my apron. (laughs) Then it goes from there into the, like, center console of my truck if I need it. And then it goes into the house, and then it goes into the garbage. Yeah. There's a couple in the drawers in the shop. We have, there's, if you look over that window, there's seven tape measures just sitting on that windowsill all lined up. And they're, they're all decent, and they all work good. But for one reason or another, they're not apron approved. You know, it takes a certain tape to like fit onto your work apron how you like to move and and the weight of it and i have that i think i i showed it one time tool of the week that little german made the star star wall yeah yeah and it's a little light and a little bit too small but i you know as a goof partly it's made in germany and i like it yeah Um, that's got what like a three eighths inch yeah it's it's really too small except for like working at your bench. Yeah. that That's what it's good for. It's like working at the bench. But even, you know, when we're cutting up sheet goods, I reach for the other tapes yeah. because it's too small. I'd say give it a try. It's low risk. It's cheap. Less than 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah. so. You can't go wrong no, with that tape. No, no. way. Yeah, that's that's a, a no-brainer. Even for your house or, or whatever. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Yeah. I don't remember how I found it, but um, when I did... I didn't see anybody using them. Now I see a couple people yeah. that use them. Um, but yeah, like you, I was always looking for the best tape. I was a Fat Max guy for a yeah. long time. But, um, you know, getting into cabinet work, it's just for the shop. It's too fat it's too and much. It's too big. It, and there's so much bend, so much uh, radius in the tape yeah, that it's yeah. inaccurate. That's another thing because so many tapes are made for carpenters will call yeah Framers, i don't need a 13 foot standout no. in the shop <laughs> i need no standout <laughs> right really right um yeah there, we we prefer a whole different set of of uh, details and yeah and you know we don't do a lot of measuring per se where it's like super vital that mm-hmm. that our tape measurement is you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, because we have the we machines use, here. Right, we use stops and, you know, you check your piece and then you're good to go and then you right. just continue to cut. Right. Um, for small stuff, I don't use the tape usually to mark stuff out. I use no. a square. Yeah, we use we use more like a rigid type of measure. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah something you can lock down and repeat. Right. Yeah, repeatability is, is what it's all about. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for bringing that uh, to uh, everybody's attention. Yeah, check it out. Stared exact, 16-foot tape. All right. So are we going to go to the to the guest gripe of the week? We can do that first this week, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's from Tim. Are you doing a gripe too? Yeah, I got, I, you know. You I got a gripe? We, we, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know I was going to be counted on to do it, you know, that we'd have a dual gripe. Yeah, but says Rob right here. <laughs> I always got something to say. You want to take it? Yeah. All right. Actually, let me give a little a little uh, uh, prelog. Little uh, is that what prologue? Preface? Prologue? Preface? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, prologue. Let me give you a little think, backstory. Yeah. So I posted on Instagram um, probably about a week ago. I was kicking around the idea in my head about getting a pinless moisture meter. So I posted, you know, best pinless moisture meter under 150 bucks. Let me know. And I got, uh, and Tim messaged me, Tim from True Trade, and he said, oh, let me know, like, what what you find out, because he's in the market for one, too. I got three responses, and it was like 520 people had seen the the post. (laughs) 
So that's where Tim's <laughs> Tim's gripe is stemming. <laughs> he's got our back, is what you're telling me. Yeah. Well, he said he's had a he's had similar experiences. <laughs> So you want, you want me to read, Tim? So, yeah, I'll, yeah. Like, okay. So Tim from True Trade Carpentry, as they say, a friend of the show. Yeah. That's that's the lingo. <laughs> His gripe is getting weak responses on questions in your Instagram stories when you know hundreds of people see it. <laughs> Which I can get sometimes, you know. Yeah. You might not have an opinion or um, maybe... Maybe you've never even owned a pinless moisture meter, but mm. it does feel a lot of times like <laughs> people are just kind of glossing over it. And yeah, you know, if if, uh, if you have an opinion, we want to know about yeah, it. We want that quality interaction. Even like the questions, you know, we'll get five, six hundred people that see the story asking for questions for the yeah. podcast. Yeah. Well, send in your question. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's curious, right? Yeah. There's no stupid questions. Only stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> we don't claim to be in that group. <laughs> no. We take plenty of, of, you know, these questions don't have to be um yeah, we don't scholarly. Need, right, great insight. No. Just curiosity uh, is is good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we meander to a to an answer no matter what the question is. Yeah. All right. So, um got some pretty good questions this week. Yeah, yeah. I was a little late to the to the party asking for yeah. it, but so you want to know what my gripe of the week is? Oh yeah, it's commercial television and how they stage the commercials. It's gotten now. I don't watch a lot of live TV. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of shows that I do enjoy, but if it's on at nine o'clock, I'll have to watch it at nine thirty or something so I could tape it, so I could fast forward through the commercials because. Now, I don't mind the commercials, so to speak, because it's part of the process of the economy of, of the show, right? Yeah. So you got to, all right, pay to play, so to speak. Yeah. But what they do is there's no commercials at the beginning, and then they like, start stacking them up. So like the last half of an hour-long show, the show goes on for seven or eight minutes, then there's seven or eight minutes of commercials yeah. and then seven it, you can't watch it it's unwatchable i noticed it with like oak island which yeah. which i've completely abandoned <laughs> yeah and dust dustin if uh if you're listening he's one of our patrons i was talking to him about oak island and we'll actually maybe we'll talk about dustin a little later yeah um that's very cool yeah, his yeah. story um with oak island at the end they would have like a commercial, and then they would come back for like 45 seconds and then go to another commercial. Yeah. Like that show is already missing enough content. It's like 30 minutes of fluff. Because every time they change scenes, they backtrack. And they, what is it on the, Red, you know, because we used to look at the Oak Island Reddit subreddit yeah. <laughs> like if they show the diagram for the drilling rig that stupid animation one more time yeah. like okay we watch the show we know what the stupid drilling the oscillating yeah. uh thing looks like yeah i in fact it, oak island was on last night oh yeah, uh, yeah tuesday i watched the first episode last season and the first episode this season i tapped yeah out. yeah for those that don't know we record on wednesday and then usually it gets posted up Jeff will post it up tonight, and then it goes on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes Wednesday night. Yeah. It depends. So I, I I try to come in and watch it, but I fell asleep because it, it it literally is so boring now. I and know. I'll watch the whole hour-long show if I'm awake and, like, watching it, uh, let's say, a Saturday afternoon or something. It takes about 10 minutes to watch the show. Yeah. Because you got you fast-forward through... Everything. What's going on this season? Um, it it's kind of just like a generic. They're looking again in the swamp, and they found some more. Um, you know, looks like pathways or stone walls. The thing I'll credit to the show is there was a lot of activity on this island. Yeah, oh yeah, and maybe if we dug like this on. Any other island, we'd find the same thing. 
It just goes to show how much we don't know about our fairly recent history. Yeah. Like this, and I'm, I got a degree in history, so <laughs> <laughs> I went to, of course, my take on it was completely different. Yeah. Um, to backtrack a little bit, I went to the new school in New York, which is a really progressive school. You create your own curriculum. And my uh, area of emphasis was really on the writing of history mm -hmm. and and how that impacts society, like how our society is shaped today by the history we've been fed right. through the, you know, last thousand, five hundred, few hundred, then the decades. Tell me that the losers have never written the history books. <laughs> yeah, and it's not even that simple. I mean, just like with the banana wars. Yeah. It's, it's it's just all the stories that remain untold. Yep. Um, that yeah, that should shape your perception, but don't right, you've never right. heard them. Yeah, we hear one guy's point of view and right. think it's the gospel. But uh, <laughs> back to Oak Island. <laughs> Man, we it's a it's a damn fast. shame because it's a really cool. The idea of the whole thing is so cool, and there is a lot of really cool information. But like History Channel ruins yes. the whole thing. It's like a. It could be a five hour documentary across. Yeah. What season is it now? Nine or something? I think so. It could yeah. be a five hour documentary like they do on PBS, and that's all. Yeah. It's like a song that you like back when we listened to the radio, and then they overplay it, and then you can't stand it anymore. Yeah. Um, at one point, that was a good song. The song didn't change. It's just mm -hmm. the station ruined it. But. That's the thing. They keep finding new stuff. There's n not a hint of treasure. Yeah. But they keep finding stuff that makes you go, man, there was a lot of stuff happening here hundreds of years before we thought there was this sort of activity in yeah. the area. Yeah, with very little written history about what was right. going on. Right, right. Which is, that's what makes it so intriguing. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, so it's it's interesting if you if you let go of the the treasure hunting and overlook the silly personalities yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it, it's something that's still, I tape it, you know, I tape yeah. it and watch it. Um, and, you know, it's no ancient aliens, but. Right. <laughs> I do like some ancient aliens, yeah. although it is a crock of BS. Oh, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> but again, I got my wife interested in ancient aliens now. Well, oh, she God. used to just make fun of me. You, are you watching that alien She's show again? going to be a full-blown conspiracy theorist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right, that, get back to that woodworking. Was our gripe. <laughs> that was our gripe. <laughs> if you're still listening. Yeah. <laughs> we're done. We're done talking about Oak Island. <laughs> ancient aliens, maybe we'll talk about more. Uh, so let's get to our questions of the week. <laughs> All right. This one came in from YouTube from Beyond the Bench Woodworking. Uh, he asks, do you take into consideration ethical foresting when purchasing lumber? And if so, how do you ensure it is ethically sourced? That's a, that is a good question, especially how we go on about, you know, buying American yeah. and small business and everything like that. And yeah. And being ecological. Right. Right. Um, we we think about all of these things for every aspect of our business. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we can have our own way each time. Right. Um, and, you know, part of the, the ethical foresting and purchasing, that's going to be as, as uh, you know, wide ranging as how far it has to come on a truck mm -hmm. to get to where we are and things like that. There's There's a lot that goes into it, not just... Are they cutting down trees to, you know, in the rainforest? Yeah. Um, you know, you could talk a little bit. We get our lumber from O'Shea. You yeah. could talk about that. Yeah, so our supplier, which is O'Shea Lumber Company in uh, Glen Rock, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. they are a member of the National Hardwood Lumber Association, the NHLA, and the, um, there's another one. I forget, it was a three uh, three-letter acronym. Hardwood something, I forget. Anyway, you know, they hold a, a sustainability verification certificate yeah. from the NHLA. Um, they tell you, we. I mean, we don't get super geographically specific um, sourcing of the wood, but all the white oak is coming from Appalachia. 
All the cherry is coming from Pennsylvania specifically. Yeah. The maple is some of it, very little amount, they say. I think just the soft maple is coming from Canada, and the rest is coming from, I think, more of the Midwest. Um, yeah. I got a lot of maple from Ohio before. Yeah. Um, and the only, ex- if you want to call it exotic, the only imported wood that we really use is Sapili, which is a super sustainable wood. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a huge tree. Fast grower. Yeah, actually, <laughs> maybe we should talk about that on the Patreon, about the, the origin <laughs> of the of the name Sapili, which was a rabbit hole that we dove down a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, if you read it on the Internet, it's, it's true. true. <laughs> So, yeah, the answer is simple as that. We use a supplier who is making sure that everything that they're buying Mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, ethically sourced, sustainable. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's great to work with them. They they have some beautiful lumber for a really good price. Yeah, we like O'Shea. And, I mean, they do it for, you know, the economy of their business. Like, they won't deliver to us way out here unless we buy a certain amount of wood. Right, right. and that makes ecological sense, too, because yeah. they're not, you know, just driving a semi truck, even if they had nothing else to do. They're mm-hmm. not driving a semi truck uh, across the two states yeah. to drop us off 100 board feet of uh, hard maple. Yep. Um, so that, that's a good question. I think it's it's important. I mean, I'm on the back nine here. I'm 58. It's not something that I necessarily have to worry about, but Jeff's. Uh, I'm sure you're going to see changes in the planet. Oh, yeah. Um, and Hunter, your boy. I mean, these are the things that people my age need to, you know, we need to own up to this. Just because I'm not going to be around doesn't mean I don't want to leave this place a better place for your son. Yeah. Um, or even just the same, not worse. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's hard with populations yeah. expanding. But we owe it to the kids um, that, you know, they're going to have access to water and they're going to be trees and, and all these other things that we've taken for granted forever. Yeah. I mean, at some point, there's going to be a change. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll reach a tipping point. Yeah. Um, and we could diverge down the road of, you know, like what we do as furniture makers, mm-hmm. you know, making pieces that are going to last hundred taking care of 200 years why not um that's less in the landfill that's yeah. less that needs to be produced mm-hmm. uh so it's all part of the same equation yeah it's, it's a good thing to think about and i should say the nhla um all of these um criteria are set by the federal government so they have the department of uh forestry and is it agriculture or yeah maybe i don't know something like the i forget it's something with forestry federal forestry something or another you know they have um i guess they'd be biologists that or or arborists whatever Mm -hmm. i don't know they you know look at the um quantity of wood and they say that okay we can cut this much and so it's all very scientific it's not just yeah, they, they have calculations and yeah. they're taking real boots on the ground kind of measurements right. of these things. Mm-hmm. Got a hamburger hill going on yeah, at the squirrel squirrels field. are battling. <laughs> Someone's holding this ground and they're trying to mount a <laughs> an insurrection. Yes. <laughs> So if you hear any squawking and squealing, that's what it is. Yeah, Sammy the dog almost got. <laughs> yeah, he almost got, got somebody today. <laughs> we'll skip over. Uh, we'll do this question. We'll skip over the next one. All right, one. go ahead. Um, found you guys via John Peters. How can a hobbyist work on getting their first client from uh, CT Vader nineteen seventy seven on Instagram? That could seem pretty daunting. Yeah, I mean, I would say leverage social media. Um, you know, there's plenty of people out there that, that are willing to, you know, buy something from someone that doesn't have maybe quite as much experience, mm-hmm. you know, cause obviously it's going to be a lesser price and, uh, yeah. maybe they're not super concerned with, 
you know, if they're buying like a cutting board or a blanket ladder or a Adirondack chair, something simple like that, um, I'd say get on one of those local Facebook pages. We have like um, Middletown buy swap kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so get into one of those, post some pictures of stuff you've built, maybe throw a price out there. I'd say that's that's going to be a home run. You're going to at least get one person. Yeah. Um, and you don't really have to um, worry about price as much. If you're a hobbyist, it means you've, mm-hmm. you've got another source of income. Yeah. You know, just try and meet your expenses. Yeah, it's an investment because you're going to get better and better everything that you build. So yeah, um, not start- charging as much in the beginning is actually it's going to pay off more. Yeah, you'll be you'll, able to build more. You'll start to value your time more as time yeah. goes on. And you'll get faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, I I wouldn't even have thought of that, even though that's really our main <laughs> source of uh, new work nowadays. Mm-hmm. And it's been that way for a while now. Yeah. When I started, it was I had a sign made and put it in my front yard. And... This this front yard here, yeah. uh, because there was no internet sales or anything like that back then, and it goes to show you um, how technology, even in a, an older trade like this, has had such an effect. Oh yeah, um, it's just status quo now. I mean, yeah, if you're looking to do business with any type of business, what's the first thing you do? You look them up on the internet, right? And you want to yeah. see what they've done, what other people have said about them. Check them out. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like going to the store. It's going, it's opening the door into Window their shopping. store, yeah. seeing what they've done, how they do it. And a good uh, social media platform, would you call it? Like you can learn more about a company than you ever could by going to visit them. That's what I was going to say, because now we can put our work on display, whereas yeah. We're going to come into the shop. We're going to show you pictures on in a photo album. That's what I used to have. Yeah. Now you go to our Instagram and you could scroll through right. all of them and see. And the other thing besides the <laughs> you know, the antiquated idea of, you know, flipping through a scrapbook is like us. We put our mission statement out there. People yeah. learn what we're about, not just what we've done. Mm-hmm. Um, so it goes beyond dollars and cents. And and in that way, we attract people that are aligned with our sensibilities, right. uh, which is important to us mm-hmm. as well as uh, just making a sale. So uh, what can we tell them? We, it's like get your get your work out there. Yeah. Yeah. Get it. You know, get the message as direct to people that will buy your product mm-hmm. as possible in the beginning. If you're yeah. looking to just get, get some clients. Um, so build something, take some pictures or yeah. Or even if you have pictures of stuff you've already built, put them up and say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm a hobbyist woodworker. If you mm-hmm. need, I make these, whatever I make jewelry boxes or chairs or whatever and put a price on it and see if somebody oh, yeah. shoots you a message. Yeah. That's, I'd, I'd like to hear how that goes actually. Yeah. It's interesting to follow all this stuff. Yeah. We actually have another uh, another question from CT Vader 1977. All right. He says, is it possible to do more how-to videos? The cabinet door video was great. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you. First off, thank you. Yeah. Um, if you have no idea what he's talking about, he or, or she, I have no idea. Right. Um, we released on Saturday or Sunday... I forget. One day this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Like our first kind of real YouTube video. The podcast Mm -hmm. is up there. We got a couple little short videos, but it's like a 20 minute long video um, on how to build shaker style cabinet doors, you know, frame and panel, flat panel on just the table saw. Yes. Simple, not elaborate. No, no. We don't, you know, not pretentious in any way. Mm -hmm. Just this is for a shop cabinet. Right. Yeah. yeah, but the the technique transfers over. I mean, that's Universal. how we build. Yeah, yeah, that's how we build doors for a piece of fur, a f- whatever twenty five thousand right. dollars piece of furniture. That's right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, check it out. If you didn't know, we've mentioned it before, but the podcast is on YouTube as well. You know, the video yeah. versions up there, and uh, going to be putting up a 
a bunch more videos now. Yeah. I just uh, actually sent one over to the patrons. It's like about a 10 minute video about making moldings on the table saw. Yeah, that, that turned out pretty well. Yeah. Um, so he wants to know if we're going to do more of those. And we would love to. I think we've, we've yeah. mentioned it briefly in the past. They take so much time. Yeah. They really do. It's it's not just like putting a camera up and filming while you do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is sort of, I was naive in the beginning. I thought, well, that's, we'll just put a camera up in the corner of the room. Well, how much could it? Yeah, you know? I mean, for for that, uh, like, eight minute and 30 second <laughs> long video, I had probably two dozen shots yeah. that I had to set up. And yeah. so... And then I mean, it's a lot of work, but the, you know, the answer is yes. I mean, you're yeah. definitely going to see more. It's, it's, uh, we talked about it last week. Adjust my chair here. I got to find a happy medium. It's a, uh, a goal of ours for this year is to, is to put out more videos. So yeah, it's part of the, the business plan. I mean, it's part of the new marketplace. That's, mm -hmm. that's it. You have to evolve. Um, we can't do things the way I did 15 years ago. Um, because it, it's not the same world and people have different expectations and we reach people in different ways. Yeah. So that's the short answer, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. And the long answer. Yeah, the yes. That's the <laughs> long answer. So, yeah, be on the lookout. Subscribe on YouTube, Green Street Joinery. All right. Well, I feel got... like maybe there's people that listen to the podcast. They might not even know that we're Green Street Joinery. Oh, because it's the American Craftsman podcast. Yeah, we don't really we don't hawk our our name that yeah. often, do we? If you just stumbled upon the podcast, you might not know. <laughs> we're, we're, even though we're wearing t-shirts. Well, if you just listen, if you just listen, <laughs> you have, might have no idea. <laughs> You're right. If you just listen, you don't know that we have like a little banner made with our logo on yeah. it, and we don't always have our company t-shirts on we're not that no <laughs> ocd about it but we have some nice shirts that that you know we usually wear at work and um last week i think i had on uh one of our uh benefactors yeah shirts. yeah i've been wearing a shirt from dave a shirt from eric so uh yeah folks have sent us shirts and we've done a few exchanges and yeah um we wear those shirts as well with a lot of pride yeah um you want to take this next one? Oh, yeah. Um, the two-parter? No, we're not doing that oh. one. Uh, in the market for a bench plane? Yeah. Yeah. In the market for a bench plane. Number four or number four and a half? Lee Nielsen? We know how you feel about that. Veritas? Something else? Thanks. Uh, and that's from Neil Tango Golf on Instagram. I think that's what it is. It's one word squished together. So maybe it's split up different. <laughs> oh, Neil Tango Golf was yeah. one word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes sense because, yeah, I, I guess can't he likes see to dance and golf. Yeah, there you go. Well, I'm no hand plane expert. I don't, I mean, I have a couple nice planes. I don't have yeah. a whole cabinet full. No. Um, I have a Lee Nielsen number four. I love it. I've never used the four and a half. I know a lot of guys either. like a four and a half because it's got a little more weight. And it's um, if you're not using it for smoothing necessarily, which like I don't use the four for smoothing because we, we don't hand plane no. to finish. It's just we're not doing that kind of work. It's not yeah. economical. Um, mostly used for cleaning up edges, cleaning up faces of things before sanding. Everything gets sanded basically. Um where was I going with that? Oh, yeah. If you're not using it for smoothing, you know, it gives you a longer reference surface. It gives you a longer reference surface on smoothing, too. But, um, you know, it's it's just a bigger plane. So you have to think about what you're going to be using it for. Mm -hmm. um, I like the size of the four. I've never thought to myself, man, I wish this was like a little bit bigger. I like Lee Nielsen personally. Veritas is also a great plane. I don't know much about their... I don't know if they have a regular angle number four. I know they have like the low angle stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what their bench planes, what sort of. Uh, a lot of times they mirror what Lee Nielsen's yeah. offering. 
Like for me, Veritas tries to reinvent the wheel too much. <laughs> Lee Nielsen is just like it's a Stanley, and they just made it better. Right. Lee Nielsen, uh, Veritas is like let's make a whole different plane. Yeah, or they all might add something. That's or, what I mean. Yeah. They're they're like we're gonna try and and make it something different. Yeah. Whereas make a better wheel. Yeah, like Lee Nielsen, the the shoulder plane, like that's a record. Mm-hmm. So they just take a a proven design and make it better with really good materials right and uh you know modern manufacturing techniques so yeah. that's why i like leon nielsen i like the aesthetic i like the feel um we like the company i mean we like yeah oh yeah ev- everything that they they stand for where it's made mm-hmm. um the, how they employ craftsmen yeah and, and all that um like you i never used a four and a half um and I had a an old record number four, which I never really used. It was one of my first planes when I started. I'm not a fan so much of that size and shape as I am. Uh, what's the number of that big low angle uh, plane? Is I that is a Veritas or Elite? That's a Elite Nielsen. Nielsen. That's a is six, it number 60? 62. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that's what I was going to say too. Yeah. That's a four. That's a low angle four. Yeah. It's just, it's got a little bit longer bed and where you put your hands, that's what I like about it. It feels like it, it's, it is lower. Yeah. Uh, on the four, you're sort of more up on top of it. Yep. And with, with that 62, you're, you're sort of a little bit more behind it, I want to say. Yeah, because like you don't really need as much downward pressure, I think, because mm-hmm. of the angle that it's cutting at. Right. So... I think uh, uh, that for whatever reason, not better or worse, that's my comfort zone as far as positioning. Yeah. I would like to get a low angle plane Uh because I have the low angle block plane. Yeah. And it's nice, man. Yeah. So (laughs) I'm funny. I love the small planes and the big ones. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I would like like a a Lee Nielsen, like number eight or number seven, one of the really big ones, (laughs) just for like cleaning up long edges, like on a door, like a, a... exterior door or barn door right um stuff like that it i mean that's what that low angle is great for because it the bed it's got to be this big yeah. you know um uh, it's in that drawer down there it's it's really nice um but brand wise you you can't go wrong with a lee yeah, nielsen yeah i mean i like lee nielsen that's just me it's but it's they're not that much more expensive mm, no no i mean some of the stuff is actually cheaper i think yeah um, so we would wholeheartedly recommend Lee Nielsen stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because you're not going to be disappointed with it no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you go with the four, I got the uh, manganese bronze body. The thing is so heavy, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, the manganese bronze is heavier than like the ductile iron. Um, yeah. And I think they only make a couple of the planes in the yeah. bronze. It looks nice too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. it's an... I mean, I have it tattooed on my arm. It's an <laughs> unmistakable plane. You see it yeah. with the bronze. You know that's a Lee Nielsen. I think they make the three, the four, and maybe the five or four and a half in the bronze. Yeah. Um, but it's a again, it's a superior um, material. Yeah, and all the fitments are really nice and yeah. heavy duty. You know, everything is just it screams quality. Yeah, and it's. Nice to use. Yeah, that's that's it. That's, it's worth it right there. The balance, the feel in your hands. Yeah. All right, Neil, go get yourself a Lee Nielsen plane. Yeah. That's that's what we say. Screw those Canadians. <laughs> they're busy. Sorry make, to the Canadian they're, listeners. <laughs> they're busy making gardening yeah. equipment up there now. Yeah, Veritas is getting a little too closely associated with Lee Valley <laughs> and their gardening <laughs> section. <laughs> But truth be told, we have a ton of Veritas stuff here. A lot of markings. Yeah, stuff. I was going to say, I like the Veritas marking tools. Uh, we have a lot of their stuff here. So Actually, I did a little 60-second, uh, some I'm trying out, 60-second tool review on YouTube of the Veritas Precision Square, mm-hmm. which I think I think I may have done that as a tool of the week. Yeah, yeah, you did. That's, that's one of your go-tos, that yeah, tool. I, I love that thing. All right. What's uh, you so got this next one? Yeah. Last time I asked. Oh, last time I asked you what to look for in clients you don't want. This was uh, 
two weeks ago, I think. Yeah. All right. Let me let me, let me read that again now yeah. that I know what it says. That was like me with the <laughs> you didn't with put a, a comma with the overused commas last week. <laughs> last time is the pause. Last time or I asked you what to look for in clients you don't want. This time I want to know. How do you find the clients that are a joy to work with? Boy, if we had that, we'd bottle it up. Yeah. The ones who respect quality and the time it takes to achieve it. That's from Nathan. Tree of life, woodworking on Instagram. Yeah, where, where was the comma there? <laughs> uh, I'm not doing any more punctuation. No. <laughs> Last time... <laughs> Go ahead. This uh, it's not such a cut and dry answer on this no, one. I think we wish it was, right? Yeah. Um, I would say it's sort of fifty fifty. The um, I'm kind of answering it backwards. I'm more answering the question that he already asked. By f- by finding the clients that we don't, or by not taking on the clients we don't want, is how we get the clients that we do mm-hmm. want. Um, you know, these people basically weed themselves out by, um, not being flexible with our opinion and sort of, you know, the price of projects because of the way we do things. They're not, basically they're not hearing what we're saying. Right. Um, so that eliminates most of the people. And then what you're left with are people that are more closely aligned to the way that we think. Right, because we have a strong point of view yeah. as far as what's good design, what's qu- good quality, mm-hmm. etc. And we're very upfront about that. Yeah. And we, do, we, we put that out on all our social media. So just naturally people who have that same kind of vibe are going to go, oh, these guys get it. Mm-hmm. This is what we think too. Uh, I think that's what you were sort of trying to, to say. Yeah, and you know, some of these people are contacting us sight unseen, yeah. so it's always like a fifty-fifty shot. I mean, not really, I guess, <laughs> no. but it's either twenty. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna like the cut of our jib, or they're not gonna like right. it. Right. So we're automatically taking out 80% of these people anyway. Yeah. So when it's boiled down to that 20%, well, if you made it that far past the initial conversation, right. Right. then you're probably aligned with, you know, our sort of exactly. ideas. Exactly. Um, and, and we're probably a good fit to work together. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. And we're not, um, presumptuous or anything like that. It's just, we have, um, standards. Yeah. And we, we started this business with a lot of things, um, in mind as far as what we want to do creatively, uh, what our goals and aspirations are for the, you know, not just the work, but, you know, aesthetics, Mm -hmm. uh, ecology, and we, we put it out there and hopefully we can find people that like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, for example, we had we talked about it last week. We had a designer contact about the uh, bathroom cabinet mm-hmm. budget 950. Could we build the cabinet for 950 yeah. bucks? Could we find a way to do it? Yeah, absolutely. We just won't. Right. <laughs> so that's where it separates. Right. Because some people want you to just make it happen. But. Right. We don't always want to make just it happen. because we have the skill and knowledge to do it doesn't mean we're going to do it. And yeah. Some people don't understand that. And it's not just about taking less money for ourselves. It's about the whole process of. Right. It's about time. Could we take a board of melamine and rip it up and staple together a white cabinet? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. We could build five of them in a day, but we're just not going to do it. We don't want to. That's that's it. We know how. We just don't want to. Um and, and some people get offended that you don't want to do. <laughs> That's right. And, and because we're totally polite and yeah. gracious, you know, we, we can rant and rave on our own time. But we're, we're never anywhere near offensive or anything like that. No, we're no, very no. courteous. We always take the high road. Yeah, there's no reason. Even when, you know, we're treated rudely, <laughs> which happens a lot. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Back to the passive aggressive. Uh, from yeah. <laughs> so, how do you find clients that are a joy to work with? Uh, I would say if I if I was giving recommendations, Nathan, put your ideals out there for your clients to see it. So it's not just 
your work that they're seeing. They're not just seeing the you know beautiful pictures of your work. Let them know who you are, what you stand for, and you'll attract more people that are aligned with that. Yeah. Yeah, Natural. this just popped in my head. Like, let's say you own a restaurant and uh, and you're a burger place, but you make like really, really nice uh, burgers. Kobe beef. With, yeah, with local ingredients, blah, blah, blah. If you look like McDonald's, you're going to get a bunch of people in there that don't want what you're selling. Mm-hmm. If, if, if it's just a generic building on the outside. And people are going to want to know why a hamburger is $14. Yeah, you're going to come in, you're going to get a, pe- a bunch of people bitching and moaning about, I never in my life have I paid $14 for a burger. <laughs> they but. don't know you baked the bun in the back. Right. And, you know, it didn't come in a plastic wrap. So make that information available and people, make sure that people get a feel for you before they ever even contact you. Yeah. Um, that way... You're not going to get people barking up the wrong tree. Saves you time. Right. Yeah. Because dealing with uh, dead end leads can oh. be a killer. Yeah, it's bad for morale. And dealing with real leads <laughs> is a killer. I mean, it's a, it takes up a lot of time to deal with real clients that, yeah. that manifest into real good jobs. It's yeah. a lot of time I and mean, work and headache. We, we spend, we talked about this before, we spend a work day in the shop, but at six o'clock, usually in the morning, over our respective coffees at home, we're talking. Yeah. And a lot of it is, uh, you know, just BS, but there's always work mixed in. And the same thing goes on till 8 o'clock at night. Because it's always there. The work is always yeah. there. I said it a couple of weeks ago. You either There's always work to do. You either do it or you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll wait. You know, we email before we leave. Is there anybody we got to email back? Is there anybody we can hound a little bit and yeah. not seem like, we're paying the ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll email him. Did you hear from so and so? Did you? No, no, I didn't. I'll tell you. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it, man. Put yourself out there. Yeah. Agreed. All right. I think this is our last question today. This is a good one from Manny, our buddy Manny. Manny's always coming up with really, really uh, insightful and yeah, well worded questions. He's a smart guy. Yeah. Uh, so Manny asks, with the growth of social media and the millions of how-to videos mixed with the do-it-yourself people, do you think the industry is actually taking food from its own mouth? So many people show trade secrets and in-depth videos showing how to accomplish things some of us get paid money to do. Do you feel as if it's wrong to be handed out for free? Nobody wants to spend money on quality anymore. They just want whatever is now. That being said, have you thought about the long-term effect this might have on the industry and yourselves? From our buddy Manny Sirianni. Yeah. That's a great, insightful question. Um, I I would say I'm not concerned with that at all. Yeah, um, I agree. There are a couple of reasons. One, people can do the do-it-yourself stuff where... It looks good from afar and is far from good. But we know how hard it is to do this well and at this level. And we've spent, you know, our respective lifetimes and, you know, most of our waking hours trying to get better at it. Yeah. And we have a full shop of tools. So if somebody can watch a video and do what I do, well, more power to them. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. sort of my sentiment. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think you can. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's always going to take work from the end user to, yeah. to, yeah. to be able to do um, any of these things. If they're a, a high skill level, like a trade secret kind of, kind right. of thing. Um, and I'm a big proponent of the the like thought that a, a rising tide raises all ships. That's so true. If everybody gets better, it pushes everybody a little bit more. The standards get higher from the client. So it's, I mean, that's good for everybody. Oh, yeah. I, if there weren't all these guys hawking bullshit melamine, slapped together cabinets, we'd all be better off. If everybody was building grain matched, in frame inset. Oh, definitely. It'd be better for everybody. I, I maybe took a different... Uh, point of view on it. I wasn't really speaking about the other professionals doing the work, but the people who watch a video at home and on the weekend, they want to do something. Oh, yeah. And Good luck. So that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's not going to detract from our business because 
we made a video or another woodworker made a video revealing how to do this. Like yeah, yeah. Jeff showed you how to make uh, shaker panel doors. We're right. So worried. for like someone like us, to, if <laughs> let's say somebody else made the video and you watched it, you might pick up a little tip. Yeah. But you already know how to do all the operations. Yes. It's just a sequence of operations. Right. So you already know how to run a dado on the dado saw, yeah. how to cut a tenon on the dado saw. For someone that's never done it, just watching the video is not enough. No, they're that's not. That's like you don't watch Top Chef and all of a sudden yeah. you're a chef. They're not building their own kitchen no. after watching some videos no, it's on gonna YouTube. No, it's going to take real hands-on work. Right. So that's why, uh, to me, it means nothing as far as uh, business. I, I happen to think um, it creates a client who appreciates us more. Like... Um, Anand is the perfect example. He was a gentleman who took woodworking classes mm -hmm. and he had a couple of pretty nice pieces for a guy who's an engineer and only had access to machines, you know, a couple of hours on one weekend day. He I've seen guys on Instagram who are straight hobbyists, have only yeah. built like six things, hundred <laughs> times nicer than anything I've ever built. Right, exactly. And... But his appreciation for the stuff that we made for him was so high because he knew. Yeah. And even after building all the stuff, when he came to the shop, when we had his kitchen in midstream, he was still blown away at like how much work and effort and matching all the parts and the hundreds of styles and rails that were all laid out. Yeah. And um, so... I think it's good for everybody. And if you discount all of the, like, sort of the the filler, the crap, um, that's always going to be part of any, you know, mass mm -hmm. exposure thing. Yeah. Uh, so so what are the questions Manny's asking us here? What is it going to have? Is it going to have a long-term effect? Do we think so? I mean, will it have some effect? I think it might um, create some people who think they know more than they do. Yeah. But. Will it have I mean, effect people on business? Like, mm, no, no. I mean. Because if you, if you can build a kitchen, well, then you can just build it. You don't yeah. have to come to us. And DIY TV has been making it look easy for at least a decade now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've been, they've been turning hovels into mansions in three days yep. for 10 years. Um, so we don't, we, we're not concerned about our niche of the business. No, and I can't say that there's a secret in here that we or I have that I'm not willing to tell no. anybody else. We learned it from somebody else. You're right. <laughs> right. We didn't invent anything. No, no. <laughs> it's like music. That's right. There's nothing there's new. There's 12 notes. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in wet, to Western ears, there's only a certain sequence that sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I'm reading... Um, the Anarchist Design Book right now, which is a Lost Art Press book by, ah, shit, I forget the guy's name, but he talked about the, um, oh, it was this family, it was a brother and a sister and a cousin from the border of West Virginia and Tennessee, maybe, and they, uh, they like wrote all these songs and then like Bob Dylan, oh, yeah. the Wils Wilsons, maybe. No, I don't know. Yeah, I thought maybe you might know. Interesting story, though, about how, you know, these people wrote all of these songs that are super famous, but then they were adapted by other people. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the way everything is. Somebody's done... Whatever you're trying to do, somebody else has done it. <laughs> Probably done it really well. Yeah. That's right. So you're just... You're putting your spin on it. Yeah, and that's what we try to do. Yeah. Uh, we try to put our spin in it, keep our head above water, you know, feel proud of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, we're not making a space shuttle. <laughs> no, but I'd like to make some of those Japanese wooden satellites. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we don't think that the industry is eating itself. No. And you know what? As these people are, this is a graph. They're going like this. We're going like this too. Yeah. We're yeah. going up as they're going up. So yeah. 
I'm always going to be one step ahead of you. Whoever you're trying to learn, I'm going to be one step ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Manny, for that great question. Thanks, Manny. Yeah. Oh. Brings us to page two. Yeah. That, well, that's all we got for questions this week. All right. What do you think about the beer? Man, I like it. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's, I'll let you go first since I picked it out. I really liked it. I mean, what can I say? It's a good, simple beer. The honey and vanilla, it's, I mean, it's not super uh, strong. Just tastes like a good, roasty kind of porter. Porters, I feel like, are a little more dry than a stout, where a stout has more of a creamy kind of mouthfeel and maybe like a little bit of sweetness. This is more dry, but it's very roasty, more like coffee than... uh, Yeah, you know, I was searching for a word, but roasty is mm -hmm. it, you know, because it, it has this sort of depth in that direction. Yeah. That I, I couldn't, you know, put into words. It's got a nice flavor. I mean, it's it, it doesn't remind me of any of the other beers that we've had recently. No. No, I mean, we, we've had like a couple stouts. We had the Fluffest, which was that uh, s'mores one. Yeah, that was pretty good. And, yeah, the Waffle. Excuse the me. waffle one. The waffle one, which was terrible. <laughs> and the, and the, what was the fruit? Strawberry or something? The, ra- the raspberry? Oh, raspberry one. coffee. <laughs> yeah, those got lost in the in the freezer debacle of 2020. <laughs> we, we, now, you know, you can say that we're, we do reach. We do make a reach when we do this stuff. We're not oh, just, yeah. you know... Taking stuff that like I never had any of these beers before, um, and uh, I always resist taking something that I know is you know like a just a nice casual drink. Yeah, beer. I'm not gonna go and get like a <laughs> Corona or something. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to talk about. No, no, and this is you know if you see this label on here that says uh, Independent Craft <laughs> right. Brewers Association, this is another small business in the United States that. Uh, I don't know if they put this label on imported beers yeah. too, but it's supporting another small business. These are guys that are, you know, committed to their craft. Like, the same the guys way like we us? are. Yeah. So this is like the green street of beers versus right. buying a Budweiser, which is, you know, Tom down there in Long Beach. Yeah. Bridge. Yeah. Just doing, trying to shave a few cents, you mm-hmm. know, off 10 million cans. Right. Yeah. We're going to throw some rice in there. Not because, <laughs> not for anything good, because it makes the beer a little bit cheaper. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, I'm. Sh- I guarantee that these guys were, uh, you know, like trying to find the vanilla for this and go, man, maybe nobody else is going to taste this, or maybe three percent of the people who buy this are going to taste this. But if we go with the Madagascar vanilla, yeah. which is the best vanilla there yeah, is, yeah. that's what we want to do, and it's going to raise our cost, you know, ten cents a can. Well, it's like this: you buy a six pack of Budweiser, and it costs. Let's say five bucks. I have no idea. It might even be less than that. <laughs> this four pack was probably what fifteen bucks. Yeah, it's fourteen ninety nine. So fifteen dollars divided by four is what we we'll call it two fifty. Three seventy five. Three seventy five. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Excuse the head math. That would be ten dollars. <laughs> Three seventy five. Meanwhile, the Budweiser. That's on sale for the twelve. <laughs> yeah. What's uh. <laughs> What's six into four? <laughs> six into four dollars. What's that? That's a little more than seventy five cents, right? So you can get a Budweiser for seventy five cents. Yeah. And they're making sixty five cents on that Budweiser. Yeah. This is three seventy five. <laughs> and they're making dollar fifty. Yeah. I know. I know that's the crime of it. These guys at Ross. <laughs> they're like us. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? They're sleeping good at night, you know. They're 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 always thinking how are we gonna sell more beer mm-hmm. and how are we gonna make the next beer better and what's our next flavor and yeah. all this other stuff. But they're not getting rich making no, this. No, 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 no. So you know, here's to you, Ross, and yeah, your cheers, Passaic Porter. Yeah, it's good. Easy drinking too. I wonder where you can get this stuff. Like, I wonder how 
broad their distribution is. Yeah, I don't know. Like most of these small breweries have, uh, like they, all these small breweries, like will deliver to your house. Yeah. Uh, so you, <laughs> you can just go on the website and uh, they have maps. Like I know, like Kane and Carton will have, like, okay, we do on Tuesdays is Monmouth County and Mercer County, and Wednesdays is uh, I don't even know what the counties are north of us and south of us, Ocean County yeah. and whatever. So this is this is brewed up in Hackensack. Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean that's a big uh, a big thing now is uh, these small companies they create the recipe basically and then they go to yeah. another larger brewery and brew the beer there. Right, it's part of this association. Yeah, and it'll um, you know lower the cost that way they don't have to have all the in- infrastructure. Yeah, and it, it makes their business possible. Right, um, because it's probably. I mean, you can probably tell just by the shape of the can and the label. You could probably, go, like when I went into um, Portside, you, I could probably pick out a half a dozen beers that are probably brewed in that oh, same Oh, yeah, it's just a generic place. Yeah. can with a sticker on it. It's not yeah. like a yeah. Bud Light where it's right. on, so on, on the Tuesdays, can they're, they're working Ross. Yeah, yeah. You know, and stuff like that. But that doesn't make it any less special. No. And some of these places will actually brew the beer at their own place, mm-hmm. and then they take it somewhere to get canned. Yeah, yeah. Because that's where the where the real money is is in like the canning and bottling yeah, equipment, you gotta have all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be safe and all that. I'd like to check them out in uh, Red Bank. Ah, oh, cool. They're over by uh, Jamie's, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I have to uh, tag them in a. Instagram story, maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, as always, Tool of the Week is in the description. Um, and on our website. Yep. We have a website. Greentreejoinery.com. We have a uh, Amazon storefront. If you want to check out Tools of the Week, different stuff that we use. Got uh, all kinds of stuff on there. Books that we've read. Um Everything from finishes, tapes, adhesives, you know, everything on there we've used. That's and we right. use all the time. That's right. It's not just a bunch of bullshit. It's, you know, it's real stuff that we use. So um, right after the show, we'll be doing, if you don't know, our, our Patreon after show. So we'll uh, we'll sit down for about another half hour here and uh, get into some discussions. Not always 100% woodworking related. <laughs> no. <laughs> Raw and uncut. We might we might even talk about ancient aliens. Yeah. We we don't digress too no. readily, do we? If you heard us talking about the banana banana wars. That's right. You can find that on Patreon. I want to know how many of you have had a Chiquita banana lately. Yeah. And thought the same after after hearing that expose. Yeah. <laughs> All true. Yeah. All true. I mean, mm-hmm. it really makes you think. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much to the patrons. Means a yeah, lot. It does. It, 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 I mean, not just, you know, the financial support, but we know how hard it is to earn a dollar. And, oh, yeah. And we try and support the causes that mean something to us, whether it's, you know, in our purchasing decisions. I was showing Jeff today the email that I got. Like, I got my Christmas card photos from Popcorn Park Zoo today. Um, down, uh, it's probably about an hour south of here in uh, Lacey, there's a zoo called Popcorn Park, and it's really, uh, it's a it's a rescue zoo. So yeah. it's animals that were either rescued from uh, uh, like a sideshow or found, they were injured in some way. Some lady that has like 700 cats in her house. Yeah, yeah. So, but they have every, bears, tigers, um, camels, a- you everything. You have like a... Uh... Like farm animal type they animal, do. cows they and fa- sheep. And- yep. And they live a pretty good life out there for the rest of their, you know, lives. A lot of them are old. And so my wife and I, we've been sponsoring animals out there for years now. And <laughs> one, one animal that we sponsor, his name's Uno. He's a pig. And God help him. 
he's the ugliest pig <laughs> in the whole place. Those I mean, potbelly so pigs are so <laughs> ugly. They really are. It's like the worst looking yeah, pig. Yeah. He's got a couple of bad teeth. <laughs> Big snotty nose. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I don't know why. I mean, we, we have all these squirrels in our backyard, but there was one albino squirrel. And some other injured squirrel, and of course we support their their lifestyle down at Park. <laughs> yeah, and your wife will drive down there with like oh, blankets yeah, and yeah. sheets. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's and, right. Yeah. My wife goes to her friends, and she collects blankets for the dog and cat shelter part of it. Um, but that's the, that's the way we are, you know. Yeah. We like to do those sorts of things in business and our personal life. Um, so. That going back to what the patrons mean to us, it's it means something oh, to, yeah. to yeah. to make that show, that physical show of it, and and support yeah, us. Yeah, it's a it's a personal connection. It's a more it personal than there's uh you know six hundred of you listening out there every week, and we have no real physical connection no. with these twelve people. I'm talking directly to these people and we're talking yeah. on Patreon and yeah. going back and forth. And, and we've made some friends through yeah. this, oh, you yeah. know. Um, we've had Keith come by, uh, you know, yeah. John Peters, mm-hmm. Wild Willie. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have uh, Tim, Tim on, Ryan from Massey Carpentry, Tim from True yeah. Trade, uh, as soon as, you know. As soon as we're able, as yeah. soon as this thing clears up, yeah, um, we'll be back at it. Because guests are great. We love having yeah, guests. Yeah, it's cool to pick people's brain. And, um, you know, we're we're here chatting all day, every day. <laughs> so to be able to, to pry into somebody else's head and, and sort of get some insight from them. And, yeah. you know, it's it's cool. Right. This is just a recorded version of what happened. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also on the Patreon, like those guys got uh, that new video today. Oh, that's so right. You'll be able to check out the YouTube videos early right. um so yeah check it out yeah we try and do whatever is possible for us you know something a little bit special to make it yeah no pressure know, but feel worthwhile yeah all right so thank so, you so yeah so thanks to uh david murphy manny siriani eric dustin fair fair like mayor or as like as i say mayor he said yeah he said no jersey or pittsburgh accent <laughs> So I, maybe I'm saying it wrong still. I don't know. So who is the who's the head of a city? And Adam Podhast. Um, I say mayor. I say mayor. Mayor. May, so mayor. Mayor. Like with an e. Mayor. 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 Yeah. I, mayor. 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 I say. So yeah, so the way I say it, it's just really one syllable. Like M A H R. Yeah. <laughs> mayor. Mayor. <laughs> You know, I live so many places. <laughs> Who knows what my accent is now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, so thanks, guys. Cheers. We'll see you next Be week. Be well out there. Have a good 2021. Mm-hmm.